Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Duran Coles Morning Show with your host himself, Duran Coles. Today is Friday, February 26th. Shout out to my cousin Christian. It's my young bull. It's his birthday. Happy 19th birthday. Um, he's a he's an avid watcher of the show as well. So shout out to you for your support. Um, and today's Friday. Like I said, it's a free thing Friday. This is episode 33. So. It makes me really happy to know that, like I say, almost every day now, I'm just churning these up um, and just not giving up, going to keep grinding. So, excuse the semi-lateness, show starting like two two minutes late, um, I, and excuse the formal look as well, that's why I was late. I have a review for my job today, so I had to throw on something semi-formal. Um, so... Let's just jump right into it. Uh, if you are new here or if you've never watched like what a free thing Friday is, normally Monday through Thursday when I'm doing the Duran Cools Morning Show, I try to search up topics that are trending, whether it be in black culture, whether it be in media, whether it be in sports, finance, anything that's trending, I try to talk about during the week and give a lot of research on. But on Fridays, I try to give myself a little break and, um, and just ramble on some things that or making my brain go crazy. And to be very honest, just to start off the Free Think Friday, I don't even have too much to ramble about, but I, I know I'll figure it out because anyone that knows me knows I can go on and talk and talk and talk. But why, I wanted to explain why that even is or what's been going on with this week. If you've been wondering, like, he's been his uploads have been weird and um, the scheduling of the show hasn't been correct and stuff. I... Uh, I, I guess for all the new people out there, if, if you're new here, I, I bought my first um, home. I do live in the home, but it's, a, it's an, an investment home as well. I bought my first investment home in December of 2019, and I started living here in April of 2020. So since then, I've been working on the house gradually, but as we all very much know, March and April of 2020 is when uh, the coronavirus pandemic hit a lot of us very hard. So it didn't smack me as hard as first at, at first excuse me I was still in school online and I still kind of had that same passion and grind like going forward but around like May and June and I, w I would even say July I lost a lot of that like fire and passion so where I started a lot of projects very quickly um between April May and June of um man, April and May really some somewhat of March too, because I was working on the house before I lived here. So I guess that's what I should say. December, like when I bought the house, December 11, 2019, up until I'd say the end of April, beginning of May, um, or end of May, doesn't matter the timeline. I was working on the house really like ferociously. I have a lot of videos on it and a lot of content, but it burned me out. I was working like 60 hour weeks from. Like when I, I transitioned from being at school to living living on my own and and working at Amazon, working 50 hours, 60 hour weeks. So I was burnt out working on my house as well. And I didn't really care at first. I was like, I can just do it. I can do it. But I burned myself out really quickly. So recently now, I mean, I just got my, my head back in the game. And you see how long it took. It's, I was saying that happened in like July, uh, June is July, it's February 26, 2021. So it took me a while. It didn't take until February. I, would, I did was working on the house gradually, but I would make a lot of like excuses or um, give myself a lot of passes because of what's going on in the pandemic. And I don't say that like it's a bad thing. I think you sometimes you need to give yourself a pass. I for anyone anyone that knows me, I put a lot of pressure on myself, and it makes me go crazy sometimes. So, so I just kept giving myself a break. Like, are you working on the house today? Nah, it's time to chill. Working on the house today? Nah, it's time to chill. So instead of working on the house every day, I would work on the house maybe once a week or something. Especially what it, what it really was was football season too. I might work on the house on Saturday, but on Sunday I'm watching football all day. From maybe all, from August to just now, it ended in February. I've been watching all Sunday, Thursday, um, Monday, watching football. So if I wasn't watching football or if I wasn't um, doing anything else, I would try to work on the house, but not nearly as much as I am now. So to get to the point, I the show this week has been a little jumbled or 
um, organized incorrectly or misorganized. I don't know if that's a word, but I haven't been the 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 most organized with the show this week because, like I said, I'm back on the grind and I've been working on my house every single day this week, every single day. Um, starting that's to have happened since I guess last Friday, maybe, maybe even before that. There hasn't been a day since like last Friday. I haven't just Friday, Saturday, Sunday till till now till today. I've been working on the house late too. So for those of you that also are new and don't know, the show is from seven thirty to eight thirty because I have a, a job from eight thirty to five thirty. So as soon as I'm done this, I go right to work. As soon as I'm done work five thirty, I get right to working on the house from. Excuse me. Realistically, it's like six o'clock, not five thirty, but like six until whenever. Sometimes I stop at eleven. Sometimes I stop at one a.m. Like the two days ago, I stopped at. I didn't get in the bed till one a.m. Yesterday, I was able to get in the bed at eleven. So it all it all depends. Um. So that being said, since I'm working so ferociously on the house, I don't even see what's on Twitter or the news or anything that's trending. Until I get in the bed, and then by the time I start to try to do the research, I fall asleep. So then I wake up. I'm still, regardless of what, though everyone that knows, I'm still going to do the show regardless. I can make something up to talk about that day. I'm not going to not do the show because it's not prepared or it's not. I'm doing the show regardless. We will get on here and have a conversation about math or I, I don't know anything. Like my brain and is too big, and the subjects that I know is too vast for me not to. For me to make an excuse and say, oh, well, I didn't know what to talk about, so I didn't do the show today. I will come on here and talk for an hour about anything <laughs> before I do that. Because, I, like I said, I have goals. I have a, I'm on a mission. I'm not going to stop doing the show. Every day, 7.30, 8.30, I'm not going to stop. So, that's a little backstory about um, why, the, like, why the show's been a little bit organized incorrectly this week and I want to apologize for that because I'm doing my best to manage both um I do put like a lot on my plate like I said I wake up I wake so my average day is I wake up every day at six ish maybe 6 30 um if I don't take a shower the night before I take a shower that night I mean that morning excuse me then I get ready for the show start the show 7 30 to 8 30 to go to work 8 30 to 5 30 um I might like have to finish some things up at work, so I might get out the chair or whatever at like five fifty ish. Then I get to right right to work on my house. Six to eleven, twelve, one depending. If I get obviously way too dirty and stuff, take a shower right there that night. Um, which before the show I hate doing because I then I forget to do my, like I'll do my hair that night and then I sleep on it and then it ends up looking garbage in the morning. So I, I prefer to do my, my hair in the morning now, if you guys haven't noticed the last couple episodes. So somewhere in there, obviously for the show, I have to come up with what I'm going to talk about um, and plan for it accordingly. If I'm going to talk about the thing, everything that's happening with GameStop and the, the Wall Street bets and stocks like that, I need to, like, it would be, it would be blatantly... I wouldn't be doing my job or doing you guys a service if I didn't know who DFV was. Like, that's the guy who started everything. His name is Deep Effing Value. Like, if I, if someone was like, oh, he didn't even mention that, or the trials that are going on right now for him, then obviously I don't know what I'm talking about. I gotta, I'm not going to come over here and talk about things I have no idea, like, what I'm talking about. So I got to come in here researched and well-versed and, and knowledgeable. So... Um, I hope you guys have like at least seen or feel that way as well. But that that was how I wanted to open Free Thing Friday. I just wanted to give a little explanation about. I, I think it will be episode maybe twenty eight ish, twenty nine ish to now. I just wanted to give a little backstory of like, all right, this is why it's been a little weird or misorganized. Um, even yesterday, like I, I'm always. The, the person to own up when I don't do something. I didn't even upload the videos for yesterday because I was so busy. So I got uh, today, I got to upload the video for yesterday and today, both to all the social media platforms and to YouTube. And I don't mind. Like I, as long as I did the show, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I don't care if I upload, like if I don't upload it for like six days and then I got to, oops, I forgot. And then I do it. As long as I did it and I know I did it, that's all that matters to me right now. The views and the that doesn't really matter. The consistency does. I do want to 
post it every day. So that's part of the consistency. Do the show, post it. Do the show, post it. Like that's that's the consistency. Um, but yeah, that's like I said, that's how, that's just how I wanted to open the show. Um, one thing I did want to talk about, because I, I, this is just something I was thinking about yesterday, is like technology and the smart home stuff. And I know that's a huge switch from what we were just talking about, but I promise it's related. So with my house, I'm doing my best as I flip it. And as I, 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 I maybe I didn't say that. Um, this is, um, like I said, I do live here, but it's a, it's my first flip. It is a, um, a investment home. So with that being said, I'm renovating everything. I have destroyed practically the entire house and I'm renovating it from the, the ground up. Like I t took out the subfloors for most of it and I replaced like all the subfloors. Um, I redid the entire like blueprint, not the entire, but the blueprint for the kitchen and the living room. Um, there's still some work to, to be worked on downstairs for the blueprint. Like there's a lot that, that's going on with it. Um, and I've learned all this like from YouTube or from people in my life that have been like fortunate enough to know this stuff themselves. Like for example, my uncle taught me uh, about electricity and um, how to switch out outlets or how to make recessed lighting. And then from there, once I learned the basics, I've gone on to like research and do a lot of other things myself. So like I rewired my whole bathroom. I rewired most of my bedroom. If I needed to go put up a chandelier tomorrow or something, I don't have to call someone. I don't have to buy the chandelier and they get someone to install it for 100 or $150 or whatever. I can just do that myself. If I need to put up a fan or something, or I can just make lights. Like if you said you want a light in the center of your room, I could just cut a hole and in maybe an hour there will be a light there. <laughs> so things like that. Um are, are t the types of things I'm doing. So to get back on point, why I just rambled and said all that is because as I renovate or fix my home, my plan is obviously to sell it. I don't plan on living here for 30 years or something like that. So within the next, it's been a year now. So within the next two and a half-ish years, max five, like max f like five years, I don't know if I'm going to be here that long, but max four more years, two and a half ish realistically, I plan on renovating everything about the house. And I'm doing it slowly because it's kind of like I've, I've preached about this before. It's really delayed gratification. It, it's taken a long time or whatever, but at the end of it, after you, you pay off some of your mortgage and then you raise the, the value of the home, you sell it, you can make a lot of money off that. That's, that's cool. Like, that's awesome. Uh... So, because this is the, I'm building it for the future, right? I don't, I'm not building it as if it, I bought it in 2019. I'm not building it or, or rather renovating it and going, okay, let's make this a 2019 home. I'm doing my best to try to make it like a 2028 20, home, 2030 home, so that when somebody buys it in a couple of years, they're not like, oh, this is all older stuff or this isn't modern. So like I said, I'm doing my best to make it a 2028, 2030-ish home. And with that, I put a lot of smart technology in, into it. So most of the lights you can, um, you can, like control, what's the, uh, the controls the word? You can control my TV with your voice. You can control the lights with your voice. There are no keys to my house. You can't get in without punching in a code. Um, soon I plan to even upgrade that. Um, by the time it's done, you, most of it will be able to be controlled. My, my thermostat, for example, I can control that with my voice. I don't ever have to get up if I feel too cold or feel too hot. I just tell Google to turn it down or to fix it or to like set it on a schedule. You, there's a whole app where you can set a schedule and say, when I wake up, I wake up at 6 every day, make sure that the heat comes on at 5.30 so when I go into the bathroom, it's nice and warm in there. Like, those are the types of things that I have right now. And that's on, like, more so of the basic level. By the time it's done, I want to have a smart mirror in the bathroom. You go to the bathroom and go brush your teeth and stuff, it tells you the weather right on the mirror. It could tell you what your, ske your schedule right on the mirror. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. There's the, ba the, the bathroom fan. I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to think of what else is in here. The bathroom fan. The bathroom fan, you know, a lot of people like to have a Bluetooth speaker in their, like, 
like an extra Bluetooth speaker in their bathroom. My bathroom fan is a Bluetooth speaker. So not only does it, like when you turn it on, get the, the moisture out of the air from the shower, it also plays music. So that you, you don't need to try to put your phone in the shower with you or some speaker in the bathroom. And you're like, oh man, the speaker's all the way over there on the sink. And my and I can't control, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's doing a lot. So I was like, what's the best way I can do this? I was thinking about putting speakers in the bathroom or so, trying to set something up, but I figured the easiest way for acoustics, put the speaker at the top. So now the fan is a Bluetooth speaker. Um, and you, you, like you get where I'm going. There's a lot of stuff that, con there's a lot of technology that controls everything around the house. And sometimes because of that, I get messed up. Like I, get, I, I, I was going to curse. I get everything gets jacked up. For example, there's some every every morning I wake up. I, I I'll tell I'll say it for the things you guys might not be able to hear. But okay, Google, turn your volume to ten. Turn the lights to one hundred percent brightness. Sure, setting four lights brightness to one hundred percent. Sorry, it looks like the TV lights isn't available right now. So he controls all the lights for my bedroom for the living room for the hallway for the like controls everything and you can obviously do it manually if you want but i'm i, I set it all up honestly because i'm lazy <laughs> that's why i did it because i'm when i'm sitting in the bed you know how you know how when you get comfortable you sit in the bed and then it's you've been sitting you got in at nine you're like i don't gotta turn the lights off yet but now it's 11 30 and you're like dag i'm under the covers I'm feeling comfy, and I got to get up and turn off the lights. I said, nah, no more of that. So I just tell my man, yeah, I can't say it or he's going to start to do it. I say, okay, turn off the lights. And he does. Um, If I'm like, all right, I got to go in the kitchen. Like, as I'm walking to the kitchen, I say, okay, turn on the kitchen lights. And, like, before I get there, the lights are on. So... That sounds awesome in concept, but sometimes I'll wake up for whatever reason. I don't know what's happening overnight with my Wi-Fi or with Google or with whatever. I'll wake up and I say, okay, turn on the lights. Sorry, the lights are unavailable. What? <laughs> so I got to get up, go turn on the lights, and that's that's fine, right? Like, that's small. You just got to get up and turn on the lights, stop being lazy. But what's going to happen when... The, like Google's controlling everything and you really honestly can't do manual because they think it's an aesthetic look or something like Google only Google doesn't fail 99.999% of the time or whatever in 2035 right so there are no switches in rooms anymore because the aesthetic looks off or there's no on the um they want everything to look modern on your light so there's no you for example on t recent TVs there's no buttons on like some of these Vizio TVs or anything like that, not on the side, not on the bottom, because they they're voice controlled and they have remotes, so they're like there's no it, for the aesthetic and to save space, we don't put buttons on here, so it's not something I'm just like oh they would never do that they're doing that already let's not get it messed up, um, so I was just I was just thinking, cause this happened it happened to me yesterday that's what made me think about all this. As I wake up and I say, turn on the lights, do this, do that. Like, okay, Google, what's the thermostat temperature at? Heating is set to 73 degrees with a current temperature of 72 degrees. What happens when I, okay, thank you. What happens when I can um, change my thermostat because the, because Google doesn't work. You know what I mean? There, there's a little first. I understood. What happens when I can change my thermostat because the Google doesn't work? Okay, Google. Is that right? Stop. <laughs> okay. Andy does that sometimes. So he is listening to, um, if you don't tell him stop or whatever, he's going to, well, I have mine set up that way because I do commands on commands on commands. You can have yours to set up to do one command, like, okay, do this one thing. And then they won't listen anymore until you keep saying, okay, I, I hate repeating the phrase over and over and over and over again. So I have it set up to, if I say one thing and you do that task, listen for up to five, three to five seconds to listen for another command. Cause I might say, what's the weather? Um, well, when I was, I'm working from home now, but when I used to have a, a job I had to drive to, I'd be like, what's the weather? Okay, what's my commute to work? 
okay, um, what's the weather for later? What's on my, like, what's on my account? Like, I would just do it. And I, there's things you can set up. Like, I set up a, like, a good morning. As soon as I wake up, I say, okay, good morning. And then he tells me all of that. And he still might. I don't, it might still be set up. Uh, I don't want to, I don't know what's on there if I say, if I say the whole thing. I might tell you guys where I live and all that. I don't want to do all that. <laughs> I don't know what's on there right now. Um, I mean, I don't know. Does it say all that? You guys can YouTube it if you want to. It, it's cool, all the things that can be done from it. But it just brings up the question of, te is technology too much in our lives? Like, right now it's just lights. Maybe some uh, some lights and a couple TVs. It's, uh, if I'm really bored and I don't feel like yelling for my cousin I can I sometimes tell Google he has one I bought him one for um his birthday so I'll tell my my Google like tell uh tell my cousin to come here and he, it, his Google tells his, his my Google tells his Google there's a message for you and it like it talks to him and like I said we're still in the early stages of all this and there's more technology that I can't afford right now but they have they have where you can control your blinds um it can control like your coffee machine, your refrigerator, your trash can. They have Roombas that control your vacuums and your mops and all that. Um so I think it I think we're gonna be very reliant on technology very soon. And that's where I'm getting at with all this. And at what point does it become an issue or a problem? I think that's the, the the real question that I'm trying to pose. For example, when when old people, and sorry for the olds, but when old people, when we put when they get put inside some type of like nursing home or something, right? Eventually, twenty let's call it twenty forty five. There's going to be two humans that work there, and the rest are going to be robots, and they're going to have to be set on a schedule to give Miss Mary or Miss 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 Jill or whoever, I just made those names up, give them their morning pills, their afternoon pills, and their night pills. Now what happens when the Wi Fi goes off and they can't they don't have access to the internet to look at their schedule? Do they do they not give them the pills? There's only two humans that work there. Um what's another one? Like what's another good one? Like they, I don't know. I want to use the the WalMarts and stuff. They say like Walmart, Walmart and McDonald's and all the rest of those companies are going to have robot uh, workers there instead of human workers. But I don't know. I feel like, and most of them are battery operated. I don't want to make myself sound ignorant. Like oh, if. If the Wi-Fi goes down, your Roomba doesn't work. Like I don't think that that's that's true. Or you're you're if they literally made this whole very expensive robot to be able to take orders and do all these other things. Obviously, McDonald's or Walmart or Wendy's or whomever is going to have a backup so that if the the or a downloaded file on on inside of this thing so that the Wi-Fi goes down, it can still do its job. Like I, I'm not being that ignorant, but. You, what I'm, what I'm, jet in general asking is what happens when the stuff shuts down, and it's a whole different question of when we have, when we add AI involved, and they, and we start to say what happens when, when it wants to take over. That's a whole different conversation. We have AI in our phone. We, I mean, Google is an AI. I literally just told him like to do all this stuff. Right now, he's not the most advanced one. He does, he's not self-learning. To the, he does have a little bit of self-learning in it, but not to the extent. Of something like, um, like a, uh, what do they call those things? A supercomputer. Not to that extent. Or not to the extent of something like, um, this was that? AlphaGo. AlphaGo is a, uh, a computer program that Google wrote to be able to play the, the Chinese baseball game Go. It's the hardest, like, tech, technically the hardest game in the world because it has the most, combinations are the most I don't want to word this and that's a good good uh, conversation to talk about too so alpha like I said alpha go is this and I watched the documentary about this when I'm working what I like to do is I because I get distracted easily I have two com 
two computers. I have computer set for, or two computer sets. One computer set for work and another computer set like for for leisure, for pleasure, for myself. So when I'm working, I'll turn on a documentary and I get so distracted that I know I'll watch it. I don't watch it. I have external speakers. I set the volume to the external speakers and then turn off the monitors. So I can't see anything. I can only hear it or else I'll get distracted and watch it. So I was listening to this documentary about AlphaGo. And like I said, AlphaGo is a, they call it like a, a deep mind AI self-learning technology that they let it see games of this this um they let it watch games of this board game go over like millions and millions of times millions of hours they let it watch professionals and they change the code and it's learning how to play and then they ended up getting there's tiers for example just imagine like if there was a college player um that's not how they do it but just for just for visualization imagine there's like a elementary school player a high school player um, a college player, an NFL player, and then there's Tom Brady. <laughs> so they had, they found like this guy, this, you can call him like a college-esque player. It had been a, he had been a professional for a while, but he wasn't in the, like the, the top, top, top people. I guess another way to explain it is their thing goes from one to nine. And he was like a level two. So after they found him, they had him play against his, their machine for a while. And the machine just kept beating him, but they learned a lot from the games eventually it got big enough to the point where they they were able to play the top like world champion in in the world like they they were kind of disrespected that a machine that they said a machine would even be able to play go they said it's the most complicated game in the world how you play go is it's one person has white pieces one person has black pieces and there's a, a big board i don't know how many spaces there are but you have to place your piece down on a space and the goal is to place your pieces next to each other kind of like the snake game and make as many connections as you can if you make those connections you own that square kind of like real estate so imagine for those that you can see me on camera imagine you put piece like pieces here and then now you own that circle all those all the circles you own give you points maybe half a point one point whatever and whoever at the end of the game has the most points you win now because you are literally able to put a piece at any time all across the board, it the game itself in concept is very, 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 very difficult for machines to learn how to do because they don't have some type of, um, sorry if you guys hear me moving, I gotta plug the phone in. Sorry about that. So, what was I about to say? So, it's very difficult for machines to learn how to do or computers to be taught how to play because there, I think they said something along the lines of like some crazy number. You would need all this if all the supercomputers in the world that we have right now tried to analyze every single move that you can do in Go. They said it would take something like like two thousand years or something, and that and that number starts to go up if like for example that's at the beginning of the game, and then someone does one one move. And then it, it ex like it's only exponential from there. You'd have to if you want to watch the documentary, it's on YouTube for free. It's called AlphaGo. But basically, to it's not as simple as checkers, where it's like, well, there's only maybe I'm going to make this up 18 different moves you can do or something. Or even com computers can can calculate millions of things a second. The, it, it's very hard for these computers to learn how to play Go. Is what I'm trying to get at. So with AlphaGo and Google were able to get. Um, for lack of a better term, famous enough to play the world champion who was based in Korea. And they were kind of like the Koreans and the professional players and everyone was kind of like, not disrespected, but like laughing at the fact like they really think a, a computer could learn how to play this. We're not there yet. Like the technology is not there yet. So the world champion if you watch his interviews, he said, I think that you play five games when you're playing like a professional game. You play five games and whoever wins three is the champion, is like is the winner. So he said, I think I'm going to beat it 5-0. It's a computer. Like I've I've been the world champion, I think they said for like 13 straight years. And they said he's the best player to have to ever play. Long story short, the computer ends up beating him four games to one. It swept him at first, like 3-0, and then on the fourth game, this guy won. And then on the fifth game, the computer won again. 
So they were mind blown, like how is this computer doing it? And another thing that the computer did, which was very important to the documentary and just to how we look at life, the computer was playing more efficiently than humans know how to play. So for example, humans were greedy. They People play the game as if the only way you can win is I need to get more points than the other person. If the person is about to get 95, like I need to make sure I have, or, or let me re reword that. Like I said, we play greedily and say, how can I get the most points, period, just in general. The computer started to play itself as all I need to do is win. All I need to do is win by one. So some of the moves that the computer was doing were not quote unquote conventional and everyone was looking and watching like how why would they do like why would it do that that move is stupid but then at the end of the game the computer would win by one point or two points or something and they were saying the computer is literally just playing to win the game it's not playing to get a hundred more points than this person or demolish them because that's how we as humans have played the game since its existence we've played how can I get the most points and demolish this person? Like, make them cry. But the computer was like, all I gotta do is win by one. So where there were moves, for to give you a better example, there were moves where it could make to make its points go up, or there were moves it could do to block its opponent's next move. And it would, it would opt to do those instead. And people were like, why didn't it just go get more points? But the computer realized, if I block all his things and he just has less than me, I don't need... To, like, for example, the average Go game, you might win, like, 110 to uh, to 86 or something. I just made that up. I don't, I've don't never played Go. The computer was trying to, was doing its best to just win 5 to 3. <laughs> like, if, if you have little and I have just plus one more than you, then I've won the game. And it doesn't matter how many points we have. And people were watching, like, this is going to change the way that people play Go because no one has ever played the game like this. But the computer is just more efficient than us. Same thing with chess. Chess is like it's chess is a very hard game as well, but it's a lot easier to to program a, a computer to how to play chess rather than um, a human. And it said there's there's rules and regulation, not regulations, but there's rules and uh, for lack of a better term, call it tropes. There's rules and like tropes to chess that you get taught as a kid. Like don't if you're going to start off, just move one side of the board. Only do the right or only do the left. Try to take control of the center of the board. Make sure you castle your king. Things like those, things like that. But a computer, when it plays, there's another one called... Um, I think that there's, there might be an alpha go for chess, but I don't think so. The one for... Uh, actually, there is. There is an alpha go for chess, but there's another one called like fish something. Stockfish, I think, is the big one right now. And that the stockfish when it's playing humans or even computers because they make the computers play each other too and that they, they tie a lot but sometimes they can win but when they make the computers play humans they will they'll do like certain moves or or things where the professionals like the elite of the elite will go why did it do that but it can just see more things than we can see and it can it just knows more than us and every time it goes why did it do that it ends up being right and we're like oh snap I didn't even think about something like that so I don't even know where I was going with that one that was just a true rambles just I guess where I'm going is technology is uh, it's very obvious that it's smarter than us it just is it's just the nature of the beast it's just smarter than we are so with that being said it's only it's only natural that we try to implement it into our daily lives like how I do with all the Google technology and all the other smart technology I have to try to make our lives easier but we we gotta be worried some of them because we always think like oh computers would never do this or there's a lot of AI specialists that come out and say Excuse me, it'd be practically impossible for them to like have the Terminator takeover type thing. But we can see with programs like the, the chess programs or the AlphaGo programs, they're, they're definitely programmed in a way where they couldn't take over. That's obvious. However, we can see how easily and how fast 
that if you teach if you just teach the computer the basics it will go on and teach itself the rest we did not teach these programs to play chess or play or play go the way that they do they learn themselves just like how humans learn they taught themselves by watching others mistakes or making mistakes in game and that's it Excuse, excuse me, let me drink some water. You can even watch, um, yeah, give me one second. If you take um, Teslas into consideration, which is one of the, the smartest things about them, it might be one of the most dangerous, but it's one of the smartest as well. All the Teslas talk to each other. I don't know if people know that or not. They have um, a network. They call it a neural network. <clears throat> where if a Tesla that's in San Francisco was in a very specific accident, it was like very rare type or something, it tells every, and, and it was in, it, whether it was in the AI mode or it was the driver that did it or whatever, it tells all the other Teslas immediately that, that it wasn't an accident and how the accident took place so that it could, they can all make themselves smarter. So for example, if, a Tesla hit a cone because it's not used to a cone being 30 degrees to the left on the the left side of the front mirror yada 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 it will tell all the um, other cars hey we gotta look out for cones like that because or whatever and it will adjust the cameras adjust its technology and all that so that it can make the car safer and it tells the programmers too hey this thing happened and you guys didn't know about it fix it that that's not something that we taught taught them you know what i mean like they had to learn that kind of how we our parents like raise us to do these things then we see not do these things but raise us to be the people we are and then we go to go wherever or have our own life experiences and you go hmm these things happen i wasn't prepared for specifically this but i know the basics of life and i can go on with the rest of my life that's how we're training these artificial intelligences And I want to, like, I, I think I've said this on the show thousands of times by now, but I cannot wait to see what life is going to be like in 2030 or 2040. I'm going to be an old by then, but I'm still excited. <laughs> What's life going to be like when I'm 45? The You won't even have to control the lights with your, your voice. You just want to think about it. You want the lights in the kitchen on, and they're going to just turn on or something. I don't know. I forget what movie this is, but this it, it hasn't just been in one movie, but a lot of movies they have, they think that advertising then the next route that advertising is going to go. We already know if you go on Instagram and you see if you've been looking up uh, Coca Cola or something, Coca Cola will immediately be on your Instagram feed, on your Facebook feed, on your Google feed, or if you went and looked up like I need a new sweater, it's going to immediately show you new sweaters on Macy's on Instagram, like but it's going to be on your from Macy's on your Facebook, from uh, from Zara on your Instagram, something like that. Here's a new, like new sweaters. There's, every time I see it, like a, a futuristic movie, they think the next part or the next um, avenue for advertising is self-advertising in real life. So if you walk past a bill, a bill, or if you look at a billboard, it will be, this is the sweater you were looking up. But if I was to look at it, it might show me a new keyboard or something because I looked up a new keyboard. How they're going to do that? They said there's going to be like watches that people wear or maybe contacts or glasses or Elon wants to put a chip, not exactly a chip, but for lack of a better term, a chip in people's brains. Oh, man. The world's going to look real different. Real different real soon. There's a... Um, what is the name of that company? Neural something? Neuralink. If you don't know about that, go Google Neuralink. Elon Musk is trying to, um, it's not a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. He's trying at first to help a lot of um, disabled people or paralyzed people get their the function of their limbs back. He said it's really it's really all something with the, the brain. So if you don't, if you're like, have if you lost control of your right arm, you can, they have this new neural network that they can put into they take like a he said a penny size or a dime size i don't know the, the exact thing but a dime size piece of your skull out put this chip where that goes and then put the skull back and there's these pins that connect to the 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 neurons in your brain and 
for example, if you think about I want to um, I want to move my arm or something, or it's the technology like helps it. I don't even know if I'm explaining it correctly, but basically there's computers in there. So imagine if you programmed a computer to move. You know how people uh, program prosthetics to move for you, or you have to reteach yourself how to move a prosthetic. It's like that, but faster. You don't have to really teach yourself as much. You can just go, and it tra it tracks your brain movement. So if you're like, okay, I want to move my arm, it it helps it do that very fast. Your original arm, the same arm that was disabled or paralyzed, or if you he said if you're blind. He can make you see again. It's just some there's something wrong with the, the cones in your eye. So he can just you just tell the brain to fix it. And I like I said, I don't even know if I'm describing that correctly, but Neuralink is going to change people's lives too. Right now he's working on and the, with the future, he said, the future of it, you'll be able to, for example, Google things immediately, because it'll be like a phone is in your brain. And that's the scary part. So you know, right now we go, hmm, how many, how many days is it until this? Or what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? You'll always be connected to the internet, so you can just if you think of what's going to be the the weather tomorrow, it's just going to tell you. You you are really the internet at that point. Hmm. I never said that sentence before, but that sounds scary. But that I mean, that's the truth. You are the internet at at that point, and. What Elon is saying, this is how he always describes it. He said, we already are like cyborgs because we keep um, we keep our phones hit attached to us. You will not go anywhere without your phone. He said, you. the only thing that's... that the, the problem right now is speed. If you want to Google something, you're limited to how fast you open the phone and how fast you type it in and how fast the results come. So if you were able to, to reduce that speed, then innovation of technology and of the world we live in would be able to increase that's his take on it so he said how do you do that you eliminate the typing and everything all that in general you put it to right now we're thinking it and then we have to tell the actions to happen he said imagine if you think it and the action just happened by itself so he came up with Neuralink and there's been tests done they had they had a chip playing Pong, like playing that, that that old, old video game Pong, he was playing it with his head, like there's no controllers, he's just playing it, playing the game with his, just by thinking about it, I want the thing to go up or down or wherever, he's just playing Pong, so it's very possible and it's going to be crazy within the next couple of years, but I, regardless, even though I'm saying all these things and it makes me nervous and scared, I still love technology, I still do. Because the pot for me, like when I think about it, the possibilities are endless. I remember um, years ago, I had to be maybe like a sophomore or junior in high school. I thought about a mirror, where I said, "What if, what if there was some type of mirror where it knew the weather and it knew all of that stuff and it scanned you and it said, all right, and it knew your closet, everything that's in the closet, and it said, all right, this is what you're going to wear today." They have things like that now. That that was. 10 years ago that I thought about something like that. They have that now. They have, everyone knows they have these Peloton. They have smart mirrors um, that I, I mean, I plan on, I don't even, you don't even need to buy it. You can make yourself a smart mirror. I plan on making it. You just put it up there. So it's going to be a crazy next 10 years. Everyone, I, like I said, I can always ramble about AI and technology and stuff. That's my passion. I love that type of stuff. But it's about 8.17. I'll open up the floor for any questions on anything. It's a free thing Friday. It doesn't have to be about anything I spoke about. Um, and if you guys have any questions, let's, ha let's hear them. If not, I will let us go attack this Friday and get to the weekend. Oh, my body. Oh, I'm getting old, YouTube. I'm getting old. Oh, my back needs to crack. My hear my hear my chair. Anybody that wants to send me a chair, feel free. All right. If there's no questions, let's go attack the Friday. It was a beautiful week. Like I told you guys earlier, I plan on being more organized next week. That was my fault for this week. But regardless, we got it done. That's that's the only thing that really matters. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, that's really all I got. You guys can follow me on all social media platforms at the Deron Coles. If you are watching this later and you're still here, it's 45 minutes in. Go think about supporting me, please. So um, yeah, you guys have a beautiful Friday. And I will see you guys here Monday, 7.30 a.m. Peace.